In this video, we're going to take a look at a game of Pong for the Altair. The game is actually played using the switches and the LEDs on the front panel of the Altair, completely standalone fashion. It's the kind of game you might have written and played back in the earliest days of the Altair. And to go along with that theme, our system today has just 1K of memory in it, like an old Altair, and it has just one expansion board in it. It'll be Altair's original serial interface board, an SIO board, that we have hooked up to a teletype. Now, the purpose of the teletype is for the other thing I want to cover in this video. What was it like to develop programs, save them and load them, back in the earliest days? Back before there was any development environment, before there was editors or assemblers, before BASIC was out, anything you wanted to do, it was up to you, the hobbyist, to figure out how to do it. And we're going to show a bit of that today. But first, let's take a look at the game. All right, I've already got the game keyed in through the front panel into memory. And uh, we'll just go ahead and examine location zero. That sets our run address because we're running from zero. And I'll depress run, which will run the game. And right off the bat, it looks sort of like a slow motion kill the bit. But instead, we're going to use these two bits to hit it. So when it gets here, I can hit it. No, I can't. Let's see. There we go. Hit it. Hit it. Oops. Not very good at this from this angle. Alright, the program actually makes sure that you don't swing too early. See, if I swing early, I miss it. Or, of course, you have to swing in time to hit it. So it's a pretty good program. It actually keeps score as well. It keeps track of how many misses each person had. So let's hit it back and forth. Okay, let's stop the computer. And let's go look at the score. How would you have looked at a score in an old game like this? Well, any parameters or inputs for the game, you would have used the front panel while the computer is stopped to put them in. Anything you want to look at in terms of results, you use the front panel again to look and see. So we're stopped. This program stores the score at locations 200 and 201. So we'll go to 200, examine that location. This is how many times the left person, left paddle, missed. He missed twice. Location 201, I'll do an examine next. He missed eight times, octal one zero. So, left player missed just two times, the right player missed eight, so the left player won. All right, so let's take a look at how you could set a parameter. Let's make the game a little bit harder. At memory location one, I set the address to one, hit examine. I'm now looking at memory location one, is a number that determines how fast the game goes. The higher this number, the faster it goes. So right now, it's got a 7 in there. Let's double that. I'll set it a value of 1, 6, which is double that, and deposit that into the location. So instead of being 7, you can see now I'm 1, 6, 14, twice as fast. Now I can examine 0, or I can hit reset. It takes me back to 0 and hit run. Now you see we're going a bit quicker. So now it's a bit more of a challenge, obviously. Of course, two players can play this, one on each switch. And you can compete head to head and then see what your score is. So I'll stop the computer. I'll go examine memory location 200. That's the left player. He missed three. Examine next. Looks at 201. He missed six times. So the left, left player won. All right, so that's the game. Pretty simple game, but um, actually it's a fairly lengthy game. It's about 124 bytes. It's a pretty long program to enter. So if you were a hobbyist in the day and you had decided to write this program, how would you have done it? Well, again, there was no editor or assembler, so you would have sat down with a piece of paper and written your program in 8080 mnemonics on your piece of paper. And since you didn't really have debuggers and it was no assembler and it was very time-consuming to enter a program, you would have spent a lot of time paper testing to make sure that program was right before you bothered doing the next step. The next step would be to hand assemble that, meaning take each mnemonic, look up the opcode for it in Octal, write it down, and convert all your addresses into Octal as well. Then you would turn around and put it in the front panel, just like we've put in bootstrap loaders. However, this was much longer, but it was still doable, and as a hobbyist in those days, you were excited about your Altair and were glad to spend that kind of time on it. So you've keyed in this whole program, and it works. You've debugged it. It's sitting in memory. You're praying that the power doesn't fail. How could you possibly have saved this? Tomorrow night your buddy's coming over and you want to show him. Well, we've got paper tape on our teletype and we could punch it to that. However, there is no concept of utilities for writing or reading files yet. Um, you're going to have to figure out how to do this yourself as a programmer. 
All right, so as this programmer, we've written something that allows us to write memory to tape. If you'll take a look at the uh, support links for this video, there's a PDF file in there. In there is a listing of the Pong program itself, a listing of a paper tape loader, and a paper tape saver. Now, I cheated and used an assembler to do those, but if you look at the saving routine and the loading routine, they're relatively short, sort of like a bootstrap loader. And um, the save routine, I've already toggled in here in memory as well. It's up here at octal address 1000. So I'll go to 1000 and examine it. Examine it. Here's the first instruction of that uh, program. Now there's one parameter to the save program, and that's how many bytes to save. At the very next instruction, very next memory cycle, I'll examine next, so at 1001 is the number of bytes to write. Right now it's got an octal 200, which is 128 bytes. The program's 124, so I'm just going to leave the 128 in there. So we can go back to this location, and we're ready to save the program. All right, so let's uh, let's take a look at the teletype. I'll turn it. Whoops, sorry. I'll turn it on. All right, and let's see if we can uh, watch this teletype as it punches. Not the best angle here. I'm gonna hit run, and we can see it punching our program now. So 128 bytes, 10 characters per second. So this will take about 13 seconds to punch it all out. Not too bad. All right, at that point, uh, we can go ahead and add some blank trailer. And there we go. So there's our program that um, should be Pong. Just written out straight binary from memory. All right, now if we go back to the computer and look, we'll see that it's in a halted state because that is how the save program exits. It just does a halt. What we're going to do now is turn around and uh, load this as if it was the next day and our friend was here and we wanted to show him how it worked, all right? So let's go ahead and just cut the power so we know the program's gone. Do a hard reset. All right, and I don't want to listen to this teletype the whole time, so let me turn that off. Okay. So we've got our paper tape, and now we want to demonstrate the program to our friend. How would we do it? You've got your computer powered on. We're going to enter the loading program just like we do bootstrap loaders. Except this one I'm putting up at octal address 1000. So now you can follow along with the uh, loading program and the support link. Let's go ahead and put this in. All right, the uh, first byte is 333. Deposit that into 1000, followed by 1. Deposit next, puts that into 1001. 267 and 312, 267. Deposit next, goes in the next spot, and 3, 12, 3, 1, 2. Okay, 0 and 2, 0, 2, 41 and 0, 0 and 167, 43 and 333, 43, 3, 33, 0 and 17, 332 and 13, 13, 2, 333, 1 and 303, and finally 11 and 2. Alright, so that should be the whole loading program. I'll go up here and examine the starting address, which is 1000. Now let's get this paper tape ready to go. Alright, let's get this paper tape in here. And where's my anti-vibration device? Here we go keeps that on for us. Alright, so back on the computer, I'm actually going to start the program and run it and then stop it. What that does is clears out any garbage that might have been received in the UART while this teletype is powering up. Alright, now for these old SIO boards and like this program needs, 
What you have to do is start the paper tape first and then start the program. So I'll hit start here and then hit run on the computer. There's the paper tape reading. Again, it's only going to take about 13, 14 seconds to read. Alright, so now let's take a look at the computer. That's all read in. Should be at location zero. For me to run from location zero, all I should have to do is hit reset. So let's take a look. And there's the program. And you see we saved it while we had the faster version of the game in there. So it's running at full speed. All right, so there you go. There is the ability for a end user with no support from any commercial software to develop a program, write a program, um, save it out to paper tape, load it from paper tape. That was the way it was done in the early days. Now the computer used for the demo today is actually an Altair, excuse me, an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look, the feel, features, performance, and the limitations of real Altair but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. This way you don't have to worry about whether or not it's going to work next time you turn it on, and you don't have to worry about damaging a vintage computer or playing Pong with its old switches uh, while you're doing all this fun stuff. Be sure to visit the folks at AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.